St. Louis is known for the arch, our sports, our Midwestern charm, and that show me state attitude. But what many people don't know about is the creative community that exists in this city. Reality shows, documentaries, stage productions, and feature films are all being produced right here in St. Louis. As a producer, a commercial actor, and a TV host, I am part of this hustle and grind to make creative media in this city. I'm Sarah Bernard, here to show you what's happening on the set. We're here at the Moonrise Hotel, the new Moon Room, and this is ground zero for the film festival this week. Lots of filmmakers are here, receptions, parties, lots going on. Now in its 22nd year, the Whitaker St. Louis International Film Festival has become one of the top festivals in the Midwest, screening hundreds of films of different genres. The festival brings together movie buffs and industry professionals to our city for 10 days each November. Today on the set, we sit down with two of these acclaimed filmmakers, A.J. Schnack and David Wilson, to learn more about their films and their views on the ever-changing and always interesting world of filmmaking. You guys are, have worked together on your first film, so what brought you together? What made you have that connection? In 2003, I was living in Columbia and helping run the Ragtag Cinema, a small independent cinema there. There was this movie which we wanted to show, it's called Gigantic, a Tale of Two Johns, and then we got a call from the distributor that the director wanted to come. And we are like, well that's cool, you know, we're this kind of new cinema and this director wants to come to this film, that's great. He had gone to school in Columbia and wanted to come back and visit, so we thought that was wonderful. And we kind of rolled out the welcome mat, and AJ showed up, and we kind of just immediately hit it off. We just started talking movies and documentaries, and, and there was that just instant, you know, bond of friendship where you're like, oh, I want to hang out with this person more. So, AJ, why Branson? For me, I'm always interested in, in taking an idea of something that uh, people have a sense of. You know, maybe it's a famous person or a place. And they have like a very specific idea in their head of what that thing is, or that person is. And if you can kind of come at it from another angle and show it in a different way, and, and maybe a, a more truthful way, I think that's one of the fascinating things you can do with documentary. What surprised you about what you found going on there? What didn't surprise us? I mean, it was at every turn, every day, I felt like almost every day we would come home and we would have learned something or met somebody that just kind of blew our mind open and you know expanded our vision of what Branson was. Branson's such a unique place, and I think especially when we arrived and the economic collapse hadn't hadn't happened yet, there was still a real sense of like you know big dreamers with big dreams that anything can happen. It kind of felt like you know everybody was manifest destiny of you know I, I'm here to to you know build my you know dude ranch or my you know water park or you know we're gonna make these huge things in Branson is just we're going to take Branson and just totally transform it and then to see it change to people just being like okay well hopefully we can figure out a way to make money or you know hopefully we can uh, keep the show going this year. I wasn't expecting the highs when we arrived and you know you, you certainly can't, couldn't have predicted what was going to happen. Was it your intent to show Branson in a positive light or just to show the truth and to discover the truth? We just wanted to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to you know, warts and all, everything. We wanted that to be on screen. Mm -hmm. So making a film in Missouri, what are the challenges that you found? I think of more benefits. You know, I think of Andrea Sporsik from the Missouri Film Office. You know, she gave us the first name of somebody in Branson to talk to, and that ended up being Chip Holderman, who's a major character in the movie. You know, I mean, that was, you know, on our first trip down, like that was sort of how we were like, we. Who knows people in Branson? And people are more excited about pitching in and helping out. Um, that felt like that, that helped our process. I mean, there's not a lot of money in documentaries. Right. So do you find that Missouri has a lot of the resources that a filmmaker needs? I think it does. There are great people who work on both sides of the camera uh, in Missouri. And there are communities building up all over the state. Columbia is a really good example where um, homegrown filmmakers are actually um, beginning to make films. I mean, there's several films that have been made in Colombia that have premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, been picked up by major distributors, released and made millions of dollars. 
Um, and those are homegrown Missouri projects. And I think, you know, it would do the um, interest of the state well to find those communities and really support those communities as they have like in Austin, Texas. David, you run a major film festival here in Missouri, the True False Film Festival in Columbia. Do you believe that film festivals are still as important as they have been to the new films and to filmmakers? I think they're even more important. I mean, they're what we've seen is the replacing of the traditional art house circuit and the traditional art house cinema with film festivals. Um, and it's not a perfect replacement right now because it <laughs> sort of takes the, sucks the money away from filmmakers for the most part. The shared pleasures of the darkened cinema, the chance for people to come together en masse and experience something, I think that's irreplaceable. I think that's something that people will always want. And the way that you build out a kind of, you know, experience around that um, when you have a director there, when you have live music beforehand, when you do the Q&A, all of those things create a unique experience that I think people really crave. And so that's what makes film festivals important now and going forward. And I think the trick is just to figure out how, does this, how do we sort of respond to the shifting landscape and how do festivals constantly find ways to better support filmmakers. People are gonna want, when they're going into these huge worlds of Netflix or iTunes, they want, they're gonna want curators. They're gonna to wanna to know like, well, how do I find the things I really want? Probably not too far in the future that you know, you'll be able to go and look at every, you know, well, what's played true false? Like that's a, that's a brand for me. That's an identity of films that I'm interested in finding. Um, and I think that that's where, you know, why film festivals will be important, not just for that first experience of bringing a film to people who are hungry to see it in that environment, but also then it'll say like, these curators who I trust I'm going to look to see what else, you know, oh, I like this film, so what else is in here that I'm, that's from Eastern Europe that I would never have watched, but now I'm interested and I didn't have to be in Colombia for that weekend to find it. Every festival has its own identity for what they look for. And if you, if you it's, it's good for filmmakers to really look through what a festival has shown, what a programmer has shown, and you can get a sense for what they might show in the future, you know, so that if you're going to submit your film to Toronto, you know, Toronto shows things which are, big, often have stars attached, have theatrical possibilities. Those are the kinds of films Toronto's looking for. Sundance, again, and, they will, and there'll be other things too, but Sundance at its heart cares a lot about social issue filmmaking. Sundance at its heart cares about films that want to change the world, that want to affect change. Um, I would say for True False, we are a fest that cares about craft. We are a fest that cares about narrative and character and immersive nonfiction experiences. Why one goes to a film festival, you know, a, it might be because you want to get picked up for distribution. B, it might be because of the kind of press you want to get. Um, and then sometimes it's just because that festival is going to show you like a really super good time. You want to go, it's like having a great uh, vacation. If you're a more uh, ambitious work, if you're like a really artistic challenging work, you want to be at True False. Like that's, that's a, a place, a showcase for you. The audience is going to be uh, willing to be challenged. Um, they want to go there and find stuff that, that isn't just uh, the things that have been on everyone's radar. And True False is, a, is probably the best example, actually, of a festival um, that has created its own brand identity um, within the sphere of festivals generally. Um, and I think you know, it's because of David and Paul's work, but also because Columbia has responded so strongly to trusting them as curators. And that's another thing that shows why Missouri is such a special place, because where else could true-false happen? I think we've all had this conversation before, and I, I don't, people have tried to replicate the true-false model, um, and they have some success because there's good ideas there, but without the, you know, without the community like embracing and loving it, um, you know, then it's, it's just not what you guys have, have done. I think what St. Louis does really well is it allows people to, to sample things that maybe won't come here for months or may not come here at all. Uh, and I think that Cliff and Chris and, and everyone at, at Sliff, like, they, one of the things that they just do a really good job of is finding the thing that you wouldn't, you know, you, you would think, well, maybe that'll never come to St. Louis. You know, having something where someone is saying like, no, we're gonna be actively seeking out these films and trying to, to bring them uh, bring them here. I think that's a great thing for the community and, and, and one of the best things that the fest, that this fest or any fest really can do. So um, being a documentary filmmaker in today's world, in the world of film, in this changing world that we have, um, where everything is a reality show, so to speak, what's that like? I tend to fall on the side of actually being pretty pro-reality show. I think that 
the benefits of taking a generation and starting when they're very young, showing them these things, which are called reality shows, um, and are often really, really fabricated, can't help but produce those kids, those young people who are going to be more inquisitive, more curious, want, who are going to see through some of that and want to find the next step. You know, So they're going to take something which they know really well, which is called reality, and that's going to lead them to documentary, and that's going to lead them to other films and other projects that are are more, you know, are richer, more interesting, or more honest. I think that's great. I mean, I think we're living in a golden age of nonfiction filmmaking. Um, you know, it's it's crystal clear that there are films being made now, and there are the mass of people making great films now is producing really, really creative work. I think you know the rise of things like Netflix and iTunes, and and ways in which people can see things on their their you know, their home TVs or on their, their home computer or on their laptop, and to do it in within a few months of when they've read the New York Times uh, review. I think, you know, I grew up in an art house culture. You know, I went to the Tivoli to see stuff, and sometimes, you know, you'd go to the Tivoli and see something that you knew had opened in New York six months earlier, and then the chance that it was going to be on DVD was like, you know, another, or I guess there wasn't DVD then, or on VHS, <laughs> you know, Betamax, I don't know. Um, like, that would be like, you know, months and months after that. So people can watch these films uh, in, in a variety of different ways and they can do it with an immediacy that um, I think really lends itself to nonfiction filmmaking. But I think you want people to feel uh, an intimacy with the characters that you have found and that you filmed. And so to be able to do that, you know, when your face is this far from your laptop is, is actually a kind of a great way to experience uh, documentaries. What advice do you have for young people who want to get into the film industry and want to be filmmakers? Make films. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's easy. I mean, like, even if you're on, on your phone or, um, I mean, now you can use your phone with and get pretty good quality, probably better quality than my first film was shot with. You can, you know, have editing software that's, you know, free and easy to learn. Well, my daughter makes, she's nine and she makes films. Stuff that probably is only interesting to like, you know, a handful of people around her, but she's it, she's versed in storytelling visually in a way that, that I wasn't until much later in life. And I think um, there's no really no excuse that if you want to be a filmmaker, if you're not out already making films, um, then maybe you really don't want to be a filmmaker because it's, it's too easy. It's too easy to just go and start to do something on a, to do a short film on a, on a weekend just to get your, your hands in it and figure out like, okay, well, what, what kind of filmmaker do I want to be? It's like what people tell writers. It's like write what you know. You know, telling personal stories, telling stories that you understand, telling stories that fit your ability to tell them. If you can make stuff that's more personal, that's more intimate, and that fits the medium and the resources that you have, you're going to make better work. I think it's, it's training your mind also to just be aware of like, looking at the world differently and thinking like, is this something that would be interesting uh, on film uh, as a scene or a piece? Um, and I think when you, when you become a filmmaker that your brain sort of goes into this kind of side mode where everything you experience also translates into how would, how would I shoot this? How would uh, this translate if it was part of a larger piece or is it a scene or, or whatever? And, and then I think when you start doing that, like, then you're, you're sort of getting into the filmmaker mindset. Looking at the world through a lens, your yeah. imaginary lens yeah. at all times. As we've heard from AJ Schnack and David Wilson, we just gotta get out there and make some films. And there's stories to be told even right here in the city of St. Louis. Please be sure to share your film news with us by following STL TV on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And thank you for joining us for another episode of On the Set.